After we had a more closer look at the ARRIVE guidelines in the first part of this topic, we will now introduce additional examples of reporting guidelines and will also focus on the so-called minimum information standards, which have been developed for individual methods and scientific techniques. In 2013, a new type of publication checklist was introduced by the Nature Publishing Group for Life Sciences. If you have published in one of the Nature Publishing Group journals, you will know that authors are asked to complete this checklist before or when submitting a manuscript. And this can actually be quite useful, as there is a relatively strong focus also on measures to reduce the risk of bias, which have been discussed before. Importantly, authors are also asked to show where in the manuscript these different items are addressed or described so that it is more difficult to totally ignore some of these items. Other journals have by now also developed their internal guidelines. So for example, at Cell Press, it is called STAR Methods, which is short for Structured, Transparent, Accessible and Reporting. One important question, however, is whether or not these guidelines indeed make a difference when it comes to the quality of reporting. The short answer is yes, at least partially. This is a comparison of journals from the Nature Publishing Group and control journals from other publishing houses without any reporting checklists. And as you can see here, for selected items like randomization, blinding and sample size calculation, there is certainly a significant increase in discussing these items in published articles after the Nature Checklist has been introduced. So that is good, but the situation is certainly not perfect yet. And it is important to understand the difference between the green and the black bars. Black means that the authors indeed have implemented this item and provide relevant details about it. But in contrast to that, green means that authors achieved compliance with the checklist by just reporting that they had not implemented this item. So on the one hand, this is better than not reporting anything at all, as it definitely provides more clarity and authors are transparent about what they did. So we can all judge whether or not we trust the data, but it still means that a huge majority of authors did not consider any measures to reduce the risk of bias for their experiments. So there is still substantial room for improvement, which suggests that measures such as mandatory author checklists need to be supple supplemented by other approaches. And that's why we would like to quickly mention the PREPARE guidelines. The interesting idea here is that these guidelines come into play much earlier than the ARRIVE guidelines when you start planning and designing your experiment. The problem with reporting guidelines can be that you have finished all your lab work and you have done the analysis and only then you look at these guidelines and you discover that you should have implemented a certain item at the very beginning of your study or you should have monitored a certain parameter during your study but you didn't and now it's too late to do so and you can't go back to the beginning. So the PREPARE guidelines aim to remind scientists at the beginning of a study of all topics which may or may not be relevant when planning and conducting an experiment and to increase the awareness for certain quality aspects. And if you want to have a comprehensive overview of reporting guidelines, please go to the Equator Network website where you have several filter options to search specifically for what kind of guidelines you are interested in, also dependent on your type of study or research. Reporting guidelines typically indicate not only what needs to be mentioned, for example, random assignment of subjects to treatment conditions, but also suggest which details are important to disclose and provide examples of good reporting practices. When you apply randomization, for example, it is essential to reveal in a publication what type of a randomization procedure was used simple randomization, block randomization, any stratification variables. When blinding was applied, it is essential to indicate what kind of blinding was applied, 
which steps of the experimental procedures were performed blind to treatment conditions? Was blinding integrity maintained over the course of the experiment as you have planned it? This is what needs to be reported as a minimum and for many procedures and in many reporting guidelines, such minimum reporting information is clearly defined. But also when you decide not to implement certain measures, and there are of course situations or cases where it is simply not possible or required to blind or randomize, again, be open and transparent about it and just explain the reasons for such, such decisions. Let's now focus on the so-called minimum information requirements or standards. Similar to the reporting guidelines mentioned before, the minimum information guidelines also serve the purpose to ensure that data generated can be verified, understood and interpreted by others. But the difference here is that the minimum information guidelines focus specifically on one single experimental method like flow cytometry or quantitative PCR, for example. Ultimately, the idea is that these guidelines help to generate data in a structured way so that it is possible to easily transfer data and analyze them in a standardized manner. Minimum information guidelines also support scientists in understanding which experimental factors and variables most likely affect the outcome of a specific test, model or assay, and should therefore be considered during the design, execution and reporting stages of a study. Only when it is clear which information is to be documented and monitored during the study, which is ideally specified in the study protocol, can we achieve highly reproducible research results and can generate high quality reports about our experiments. The concept of minimum information standards started and was first introduced in 2001 with a paper published in Nature Genetics presenting minimum information about a microarray experiment, which they called Miami. Here, the authors developed and provided detailed guidance on what information and metadata about such a microarray experiment is crucial and important to be reported. Again, to provide the full picture of what happened in a published microarray experiment so that any data sets generated can be used to their full potential. What does it mean when we say full potential? The idea is that everyone who produces and publishes new data sets should ask three questions. Which information do I report? Which terms do I use to report this information? and in which formats do I present my data? And to answer these questions, the minimum information initiatives then provide for each specific method, minimum reporting standards to define what information should be documented and reported, an alignment of the vocabulary and ontologies which should be used for a certain method, and an agreement on the formats in which data are saved, stored and archived, for example. As a result, information generated by using certain methods should then ideally be structured and organized in a way that facilitates data sharing, the verification of results and the reuse of data. And as mentioned before, for systematic reviews and other meta-analysis approaches, it should then be easier to extract information for everyone and if everyone is using the same language and formats. To get an overview for which methods minimum information guidelines have been developed, the fairsharing.org website provides the possibility to search for your specific model or method of interest. Here are just some examples to highlight some of the available methods that have been developed by different working groups, including proteomic-based experiments, Western blotting, flow cytometry, quantitative PCR, histochemistry, and so on. A repository for minimum information guidelines is also provided by Equipped via the Equipped toolbox. If you're interested, please follow the QR code provided here. 
So if you would like to double check that you have considered all critical information when reporting about your last experiment, please have a look at the fairsharing.org website to see whether for your specific technique minimum information standards already exist, as it can help to maximize the output and usefulness of your research.